Hi friends, thanks for joining us for another Sunday Youth Class. Have you guys ever played with a Magic 8-Ball? It's this toy that... the. Um... Hey friends, thanks for joining us for another Sunday Youth Class. Have you guys ever played with a Magic 8-Ball? It's a toy that the Mattel toy company developed in the 1950s and it gave kids a fun way to guess the future. So when a child shook the ball, one of 20 different answers would pop up as a response to a yes or no question. There were 10 positive responses, there were five that were non-committal, and then five that were different ways of saying no. So odds were that you would receive the reply that you wanted, and when it wasn't the case, most kids would quickly learn to ask the same question in different ways so that they, they could get the confirmation that they wanted. Perhaps it was humanity's obsessive desire to know the future that led to the toy's popularity. And though the Magic 8-Ball was a lot of fun, people quickly learned that it wasn't an accurate predictor of the future. Truth be told, none of the ways that we try to predict the future are worth very much. But when we search the Bible, we discover that there's no need to predict the things that God has already revealed to us. So today, we're going to start by digging into um, Daniel chapter 7. And we'll see how this unfolded in Daniel's life. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel saw a dream and visions of his head as he lay in his bed. Then he wrote down the dream and told the sum of the matter. Daniel declared, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then, as I looked, its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man, and the mind of a man was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second one, like a bear, it was raised up on one side. It had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And it was, a lot. it was told, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked, and behold, another, like a leopard, with four wings of a bird on its back. And the beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broken pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. This chapter, it's filled with biblical prophecy. And here we learn how the Messiah will eternally rule the nations and overcome the satanic influence that we battle now. To convey God's message, Daniel shared his dream of four beasts. And we see that each of these beasts represents a nation or an empire. The nations depicted are the same as those that were identified in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. They symbolize Babylon. Persia, Greece, and Rome. And as before, God revealed that these empires were warring against him, but they were temporary. Under the umbrella of Rome, Daniel revealed the little horn. And this little horn stands for an evil figure, which is often referred to as the Antichrist. And we see how the Antichrist rises to power. We see that a time of great tribulation and deception was going to take place under this evil figure. Let's keep reading. As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed, 
and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. This magnificent vision of the Ancient of Days is a calming reassurance that we all need as we look to the future. This description of Yahweh, it's in stark contrast to the evil that we see from the Antichrist. The Ancient of Days and his white clothing, it points to his absolute purity. And his white hair speaks of his eternality. The flaming throne that he sits on, the blazing wheels beneath, and the river of fire that flowed from it, all of these things communicated the swift judgment that he intended to execute on the wicked. And with the record books open, we see that he's going to smite the nations who rebelled against him. Before establishing his kingdom according to its full brilliance, he was going to rid the world of the wicked nations and the wickedness of the nations. And just when it appears that the Antichrist will destroy God's people, we see that he too is going to face the Ancient of Days. Just as the Apostle John presented from his visions, the beast, along with the false prophet, they would be cast out into the lake of fire. And ultimately, this is the fire that's going to house all unbelievers throughout history. God's people are now going to be safe forever. And the entire satanic rebellion only exists for as long as God allows. We see that time is truly in God's hands. And when the devil is bound, God is the one setting the limit. Let's read the last part of the prophecy. I saw in the night's vision, and behold, the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. These verses, they wrap up Daniel's visions and they give us a glimpse at the overall story of God's redemption. So here we see that the Lord will prevail. He's going to establish a new heaven and a new earth. And the nations will gather in God's presence and kings will bow to his glory. And for the first time since the Garden of Eden, creation is going to function just as God intended. And even more importantly, the Lord will once again dwell among his people. He's going to dwell among them in the person of Jesus Christ, who's the Son of Man. Jesus often referred to himself as the Son of Man in the Gospels. And because he took the place of sinners, we see that Jesus Christ, as the divine Son of Man, received from his Father the promised eternal kingdom of God, along with a name above all other names. And that's the hope that we live in. So let's close by praying the call for the third Sunday after Pentecost. O Lord, from whom all goodness proceeds, grant us the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may always think those things that are good, and by your merciful guidance may accomplish the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks for joining us again this morning. Just a reminder that we're going to be taking this week off from our regular Wednesday youth gatherings as we just finished our uh, Wednesday series and our book study. But we're going to be having our end of year get together next week on Wednesday, June 23rd. And this will be at seven o'clock at the church. So we're looking forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, have a blessed week and take care.